For the past year, even in the final weeks of his life, he gave me his wise counsel, especially with regard to Russia. One thing in particular left a profound impression on me. Though this man was in his ninth decade, he had an incredibly sharp and vigorous and rigorous mind. As a public man, he always seemed to believe the greatest sin was remaining passive in the face of challenges. And he never stopped living by that creed. He gave of himself with intelligence and energy and devotion to duty. And his entire country owes him a debt of gratitude for that service. Oh yes, he knew great controversy amid defeat as well as victory. He made mistakes and they, like his accomplishments, are part of his life and record. But the enduring lesson of Richard Nixon is that he never gave up being part of the action and passion of his times. He said many times that unless a person has a goal, a new mountain to climb, his spirit will die. Well, based on our last phone conversation and the letter he wrote me just a month ago, I can say that his spirit was very much alive to the very end. Shy and withdrawn, Richard Nixon made himself succeed in the most gregarious of professions and steeled himself to conspicuous acts of extraordinary courage. In the face of wrenching domestic controversy, controversy he held fast to his basic theme that the greatest free nation in the world had a duty to lead and no right to abdicate. Richard Nixon would be so proud that President Clinton and all living former presidents of the United States are here symbolizing that his long and sometimes bitter journey had concluded in reconciliation. There comes a time when we have to realize that life is short. And in the end, the only thing that really counts is not how others see us here, but how God sees us and what the record books of heaven have to say. For the Bible, who, for the believer who has been to the cross, Death is no frightful leap into the dark, but is an entrance into a glorious new light. I believe that Richard Nixon right now is with Pat again. Because I believe that in heaven we will know each other.
commitment to consecrate my office, my energies, and all the wisdom I can summon to the cause of peace among nations. I've done my very best in all the days since to be true to that pledge. As a result of these efforts, I am confident that the world is a safer place today, not only for the people of America, but for the people of all nations. And that all of our children have a better chance than before of living in peace rather than dying in war. This, more than anything, is what I hoped to achieve when I sought the presidency. This, more than anything, is what I hope will be my legacy to you, to our country, as I leave the presidency. Watergate will always stay there. That's, uh, that's the dark side of the uh, Nixon uh, career, and that remains, and uh, we'll always mention that when the subject of Nixon and his place in history comes up. He can't entirely live that down. I think the reason that that has begun to fade and the, the foreign policy achievements emerge larger is that he spent the last 20 years concentrating on foreign policy. He seldom ever refers to Watergate. It's a, it's, he probably, more than any other human being, regretted that chapter in his life. I believe.